what uh, you have really learnt about society from the study of sociology. Uh, do you know what is Gini coefficient? What is the meaning of nakshat? Can you define religion for me? Do you believe there is uh, some future of the cryptocurrencies? So what is India's policy towards Myanmar? May I come in, sir? Yes, come in. Good afternoon, sir. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Swati. Yes. How would you like to introduce yourself to the board? Sir, my name is Swati Sharma. I am from Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. I have done my schooling and graduation from Jabalpur. I have completed my graduation in computer science engineering from Hitarni College of Engineering and Technology in 2019. And since then, I have been preparing for civil services examination. And this is my third attempt in civil services. This is your third attempt. Tell me, Swati, you are a qualified computer engineer. Why did you not go for the campus placement? So in my final year, when I was exploring the career prospects, I found that uh, in uh, engineering domain, I will be contributing towards the technological development and I would be restricted to that. But in civil services, I will, my job profile would be more dynamic and diverse and my capabilities will, would be more better utilized and I will be more satisfied with my job. So that's why I didn't go for campus placement and decided to pursue civil services. So when did you start uh, preparing for the civil services? In 2019 after my graduation. After your graduation. Till then you are focused to your uh, studies only. Yes, sir. Okay. Then why did you choose a subject like sociology over a science subject, being a computer science graduate? So first thing is uh, computer science is not uh, available in okay. optional subjects and second thing sir, being a civil servant, uh, it was important for me to know the society first, what are the problems and issues from different perspectives and what are the social institution processes and the interaction that happens between the people. So that's why I chose sociology. How would sociology help you in administration? The first and foremost thing for a civil servant is to work for the society and to know its nitty gritties. So sociology have provided me a new perspective about the issues, whether it's women, children, child labor, and various other issues, a so sociological perspective. Mm. So that's why I have decided to sociology. Okay, tell me one thing. What uh, you have really learned about society from the study of sociology? First thing that I have learned that where there are various social institutions that are present in the society which have their functional as well as di-functional aspects also. So we have to look both ways, not look any issue from one perspective and go for a multi-dimensional perspective. The second, uh, second thing is that. Okay, what do you know about uh, patriarchy? So patriarchy is basically the uh, patriarchy is the domination of male decision in all aspects of women, whether it's in home or outside. And the male domination basically that prevents in the society in terms of education and division of labor, everything. Have you seen it in personal life? Yes, sir, to an extent, yes. Share with us. So, in the, my family only, I've seen my cousin got married at 24, uh, when she was 24 years age, but she wanted to pursue higher education. But uh, my uncle decided to get her married. So I think that was a patriarchal influence because her right to marriage was guided by his father, her, her father. So I think that's one of the cases I have seen in my family. If you are in a power of, uh, in a position of power where you can dictate terms, how will you ensure that this uh, element of patriarchy is reduced to a great extent? So first thing is uh, providing uh, adequate and quality education to women so that they are more aware about their rights and you know, second is providing gainful employment to them because in my opinion a gender gap in the home can only be built when we build gender equality at the workplace so second thing and third in the health sector where women should be more healthy and uh, all their uh, issues like uh, period poverty is an issue nowadays and prenatal and postnatal care Anemia cases has been rising. So in health domain also, women should be empowered to the right of food, to nutrition, that aspect. 
What do you mean by matriarchy? Matriarchy. So matriarchy is basically female domination, where female are taking decisions for the family. So that is Any society in India follows matriarchy? Sir, in uh, South, oh, there are Moplas and uh, Nair communities there that are, are to a limited extent they are matriarchs. Yes, matriarchy or uh, matrilineal society, Nair society? Sir, they are matriarch matriarchies. Sure. No, sir, I am not 100%. Okay. Name, name two sociologists of India. The first one is uh, G.S. Ghurie. And second, M. N. Srinivas. What is his most popular uh, theory of Mr. M. N. Srinivas? Sanskritization. What is what do you mean by Sanskritization? So, in Sanskritization, he said that uh, the way that the lower caste uh, or low people people adopt the culture, ideologies, ways of life of the so-called upper class people to gain mobility in the social hierarchy that is uh, Sanskritization. Give us one example of Sanskritization. So when uh, lower class people gain the occupational mobility in one example, concrete example in uh, India. Some B. B. R. Ambedkar, Doctor B. R. Ambedkar. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Swati. Yes. Are you for Jabalpur? Yes. To be the next capital of India. I think, sir, before uh, allotting it the next capital of India, there are certain issues that must be tackled and settled first. Then only. It can be become a capital of India right now. No, you are arguing against it. You have to argue for. Okay, I have to argue for it. So first one. The first one is. Uh, it is a uh, uh, develop in a process of developing. Uh, it has been allo uh, allocated for smart city mission also. So th there are certain projects which are going on. So in first is that second, it has a broadened agrarian economy. So in that, that sense, and third, uh, historically also, Madhya Pradesh was important in the independence process. For 1939, Congress session happened in Tripuri. So that is the case. And various uh, marches also were started. One was Janda Satyagraha that was started from Madhya Pradesh, Jabalpur. So these are some of the points. There was a committee set up by British government in India before independence which did recommend Jabalpur to be the capital of India. Are you aware? No, sir. Okay. Uh, your ch job preference I was looking at, you have given IFS fifth ch ch preference. If let's say you are appointed Indian ambassador to Russia, how do you conduct India-Russia relationship? The first thing I will so, tend to diversify the area of engagements because right now we are more di dominated by the defense cooperation is a higher share is in defense cooperation, so in more like energy, trade, security, in that domain I would like to diversify the content. Second, in the connectivity sector I want to be more assertive in that sense because connectivity with Russia will also be from Central Asia and our West Asian countries. So in the connectivity sector I would utilize that. And third would be people to people contact by organizing cultural events and fairs for... Do we cooperate on cyber security matters? Sorry sir, I am not good. Okay, by the way, who was the first ambassador to Russia? Indian ambassador after independence? Sorry sir, I am not Okay. Uh, do you know what is Guinea coefficient? Oh yes sir. What is this? The so, Guinea coefficient basically measures the in uh, income inequality. Uh, so, what is the present status of Guinea coefficient in India? The value is rising or falling? Sir, after COVID, it is falling. If the value of Guinea coefficient is falling, uh, you would conclude what is, what is happening to inequality? Inequality is widening or narrowing down? So, uh, inequality is actually widening because... Uh, if the, the value of Guinea coefficient is falling? No, so zero is... Okay. Sorry, sir, I am not able to recall it. Right. Okay, fine. As a student of sociology, I think you have studied about household versus family. What are the distinctive differences between the two? So first thing is uh, family is basically considered as a social unit. However, household is considered as a dwelling unit. In a household, first thing is you are living together in a same house. And but with family, it, it doesn't matter that if you are living in same house or not, it a degree of joinness 
in terms of emotion connect that is more important for family so for evolution also like nowadays concept of household is gaining more traction because there are new local household that are taking place so in that context they are, they, they can you give us some give us some examples of household which are not families so hostels okay and dormitories hotels that's true uh, what's the average size of household in india how many members are there per fam household sorry sir i am not aware of the exact no idea at all uh, what's the difference between exclusive economic zone and a special economic zone sir exclusive economic zone as far as i remember is 200 nautical mile from the coastline that is termed as exclusive economic zone and a special economic zone is within the country uh, that are deemed as foreign territory for the foreign transactions and uh, for export and custom duty purpose that's correct my final question is that what is the difference between a zonal council and an inter interstate council general council and interstate zonal council and interstate council the so first thing zonal councils are statutory bodies under state reorganization act where there are five zonal councils where states are grouped uh, and the discussions for the development and cooperation is taken place and interstate councils are basically between two states and those are constitutional bodies but not permanent president set up as That's time correct. of need. thank you swati thank you sir hello swati how are you i'm good sir swati uh, as i understand swati is a nakshatra yes sir what is the meaning of nakshatra so nakshatra is a star nakshatra is a star no sir or is a constellation or neither i think uh, as far as I, rem i remember it it's a star how many nakshatras are there uh, as per indian understanding sorry sir i'm not aware of it how many zodiac signs sir 12 12 uh, where does this swati nakshatra lies in the zodiac sign no idea you studied uh, computer science yes sir. That, that was your subject of graduation yes uh, tell me if we look at uh, the recent fall in the cryptocurrencies what are the reasons what are the technological aspects of it apart from the economy so first thing is the cyber security concerns that are there among the people uh, that uh, is the first reason the so second there is no legal backing for cyber security also cryptocurrency so that is the second reason Parasar. Tell me what exactly can you name a few cryptocurrencies? So Bitcoin. Okay. Ethereum is one currency. What a, what what do we mean by cryptocurrency exchange? The transaction that happens in cryptocurrency in digital format without any central institution monitoring it. So that is cryptocurrency exchange. Do you believe there is uh, some future of the cryptocurrencies? So with advancement in technology and the accessibility that is there. i think there are future prospects in it but that must be regulated so to end the volatility for the people why environmentalists are concerned about cryptocurrencies what is the imp environmental impact of cryptocurrencies so environmentalists are concerned because it is believed that they will lead to, uh, they are more energy intensive because when they are generated a more amount of energy is consumed so in that sense they are more concerned about it why energy is consumed So the process through which they are generated, in that energy is consumed in an electronic format. Cryptocurrencies are generated. You are a computer science graduate. Sorry, sir. I will read more on that. No problem. You are coming from Madhya Pradesh. Yes. Madhya Pradesh is specifically known for the tribals. There. Yes. Tell me, if you have to choose three tribes from India, which are most uh, mis uh, mainstreamed, which will these uh, three types will be? So from Madhya Pradesh. from entire country the first one is the santhal community most mainstream mainstreamed yes sir the second are bheels and third are gonds okay what do you mean by mainstreaming of the communities uh, of the tribes because i can think of think of many other tribes which are more urban visible so i think those are uh, mainstream tribes are that are more connected to the social economic and political developments of the country and more integrated with the wider society so i think ideally we when we should declare that this tribe is no more a tribe it's more of a uh, uh, otherwise uh, uh, mainstreamed community so first thing is when the economic activities they are not doing their primitive hunting gathering thing and they are more uh, taking up the prevalent economic activities of agriculture industry and services in that sector 
second uh, when they gain a significant level of education literacy rate uh, second is that and third when their social indicators are more improved and that and third is when their marginalization ends and discrimination and inequality bit of, of mainstream and the tribes end i think that when we can call it a mainstream community so the you were mentioning why you uh, took the sociology as your discipline uh, tell me and you mentioned gender there tell me three things we uh, which we can learn from the tribal society when it comes to gender the first thing is the sex ratio sex ratio among the tribal is uh, higher as compared to mainstream society uh, second is the equality perspective i think they are more equal with men women thing and there are not much inequality in that sense among them the women are also part of the decision making and the community in that I can recall only two things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Swati, continuing with sociology discussion, can you define religion for me? Ma'am, uh, I believe religion is a set of practices and beliefs that people get associated and perform to for spirituality and to gain some mental solace in that. Okay. Can science be considered a religion? Yes, ma'am, to an extent. Yes, by your definition. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, are science and religion antagonistic? Ma'am, partially yes, and partially no also because. Can you please explain or elaborate on it? Science and religion some are sometimes antagonist, but they are also cooperate in some sense because of, first thing because of scientific developments, spread of religion has taken place to the remote areas. because of tv social media so and second uh, they are antagonist when there is the concept of pseudo science that emerges when religion goes against the scientific scientific principles for example like you know emergence of universe and uh, during covid also we have seen that there was vaccine hesitancy because of this uh, the difference between science and religion what are the markers Uh, by which you can say that a particular society is becoming more religious or it's turning towards religiosity as opposed to developing a scientific temper and first thing which i can think of is when the decisions and the the decisions that are taken by people are more guided by the religious philosophies and um, then more on the rational perspective they are not guided by rational things but on the religious scriptures and second when the communal fault lines also emerge that that also we can see that the religion is empowering the science domain i'll give you a situation and you tell me how would you take decision in such a situation suppose you are posted at a place in which you come to know that the forest officials over there have arrested some of the tribals on the pretext of minor offenses which as per the environmental acts are fine by the law but you know they are so minor and the uh, reason for forest officials to do so is to uh, in, you know uh, just put a sense of uh, fear in the local population and their domination in such a situation you have to administer the area how will you you know handle the situation legally everything is fine but you understand the problem first thing i will do is to inquire and with the forest officials and with the tribals as well to know the both side of the story so that i can make a more informed decision and a rational decision for the administration purpose second i will look into offenses what they have committed because they are maybe they are sacred to them and their cultural practices so as long as they don't cause much damage to the environment and if the offenses that they have done are not sacred or essential to their practice but still they are offenses as per the laws but they are very minor things uh which shouldn't be punished in uh, general but legally it's fine that's what i had said at this onset then what would you do sir ma'am i will release those tribals i will not punish on what pretext would you release because the arrest has not been made illegal ma'am but those are minor offenses still they are offense ma'am still they are minor offenses and you would I be going against the law if you release them uh, with law also i think social justice is also important we should 
look into their concepts and their pretext also. So that's why I think. Okay. Uh, my last question to you. You are from Jabalpur. Uh, can you tell me why Narmada doesn't form deltas? So, ma'am, Narmada actually uh, is a merges into sea in from Gulf of Khambar, mm -hmm. so which are a part of Western Ghats. So that's why the speed and the elevation is there. That's why it forms estuaries and not delta. And which are the other two uh, rivers which emerge from Amakantak? One is Stone River and the second is Johila River. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Swati, uh, what do you understand by India's act is policy? And do you think it is just uh, old wine in new bottle? Because we already had a look east policy. So, look east policy was focusing basically on the ASEAN countries. However, Act East policy also includes the East Asian countries of Japan, South Korea, and for a wider Indo-Pacific Indo perspective is there in the Act East policy. And a more assertive uh, steps we are taking in form of connectivity and people-to-people -people engagement. So that is the change between Look East and Act East policy. Okay. And uh, uh, how, how much do you think Northeast is important to India's Act East policy? So Northeast is very much important because it is the main connectivity link between the main mainland India and the Northeast in India. And also the cultural dimension is there, cultural affinity and cultural similarity between India and ASEAN, between Northeast India and ASEAN countries is there. So people to people contact is more. Okay, we have a, a neighboring country which is also a member of ASEAN where there was a military coup. Which country is that? Myanmar. Myanmar. So what is India's policy towards Myanmar? We are the, we claim to be the world's largest democracy. And uh, there in Myanmar, our actions are actually uh, not in uh, conformity with our claim of being the largest democracy or being upholders of democracy. So with Myanmar, India has uh, followed to engage with also military junta that is uh, having power right now. Also, sir, there is a fear that if India will not engage with military, China will make its place and that will be counterproductive for India. So that's why India is not going out there. So it basically maintaining a balanced relationship so that it can convey its interest and its perspectives. And so if India can maintain relations with uh, uh, Junta in Myanmar, then what is stopping India from recognizing and having better relations with Taliban regime in Afghanistan? If principles are not to be considered, then we can have good relations with Taliban also. So with Taliban, there are other issues as well. First one is the influence of Pakistan and the threat of cross-border terrorism and also some Haqqani In group. fact, Pakistan is having a lot of issues with Taliban. Yes, sir, those are also there. But with uh, Taliban, their policies for human rights also concern India. And the act of uh, ta Taliban that they are promoting actually cross-border terrorism, that is a threat to India. And uh, in the diplomatic, in the subtle level, India is also engaging with Taliban that its mission is also opened in Kabul. So India is doing that, but already concerning its interest with terrorism and human rights issues. Okay. Uh, Swati, like you come from Madhya Pradesh and there has been reintroduction of cheetah. Yes. Do you think it is actually going to help in wildlife conservation or it is going to take our attention away from protecting the indigenous species? and focusing on an exotic species like cheetah? So I believe it will lead to wildlife conservation because in area where it will it is re reintroduced, it will boost up the, the forest officials and the government will work to maintain that ecosystem so that it can survive. In, and in terms of cost-benefit ratio, don't you think like the cost is going to be much more and the benefit is very like uh, questionable? So I believe benefit will be generated in form of wildlife tourism. Uh, so, in that sense, cost-benefit will be balanced. Okay. My final question to you, Swati. Uh, this uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary, it has uh, said uh, or it has said that gaslighting is the word of the year for 2022. So, what is this term gaslighting? Sorry, sir. I am unable to Thank you, sir. Swati, your hobbies include dance, watching movies, playing badminton, walking and physical exercise. Which of these activities uh, gives you maximum pleasure? So dance. Dancing, why? So with dance, I feel I can, I am able to express my emotions and release my energy. And it's something that stress, uh, de-stresses me. De-stresses you. Yes. 
So, what kind of dance you do? Sir, freestyle. Freestyle. Okay, that gives you maximum pleasure. One last question before we let you go. You are born on 31st January. So, what happened on 30th January in Indian history? Sir, Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated. Where was he assassinated? Sir, in Delhi. Which place in Delhi? Sorry, sir. No I idea. Broken. Who gave uh, Mahatma Gandhi the name Mahatma? Why is he known as Bapu? So, I believe the contribution he made to the Indian freedom struggle and his principles made him the Bapu or the father Who of India. Who gave him the title Bapu? Sir, Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose. Netaji Shubhash Chandra. Who was political guru of Mahatma Gandhi? Sir, Madan Mohan Malviya. Are you sure? No, no, sir. Okay, Santi. Yes, uh, Sadi. Your interview is over. Let me go now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Sit down. Thank you, sir. This is your uh, second interview. Yes, sir. What happened last year? Uh, I missed the cutoff by 12 marks. How much did you get in the uh, personality test? 151. Low marks, not very encouraging. Yes, sir. But did you evaluate your performance? Yes, sir. What happened? Sir, I think I was not able to communicate properly my thoughts and opinions. In that, I was lacking. And there was a depth of content also. That was an issue. So, last you know the issues. We not uh, reiterate all those issues. Yes. You have gone through this grind once. You know, it is not very intimidating. Board is very cordial. Yes. But at the same time, they would like to have some content. Yes. In whatever questions they ask you. So, it's a, so you have to be slightly careful. In spite of uh, appearing at the uh, UPSC interview once, you appear to be quite nervous even today. No. So, that should not happen. You have to have that confidence in yourself. Yes. That I will do still better. And you are capable of doing much better and getting a much better marks. Okay. But you have to have confidence in yourself. Where is your interview? 7th? Seventh? 7th Seventh Feb. 7th Seventh Feb. So, a lot of time is there to prepare. I mean, my advice to every candidate is that you should start reading newspapers every day without fail, particularly the front page headlines. Not down points, oh. why, how, when, what, these four questions you should be asking and going through every day at the end of the day, what has happened and repeating it on a daily basis. Then whatever questions are asked, international affairs, national affairs, you will be able to answer those questions. So while answering questions, you should be very honest in your answers, very truthful. You should not be hazarding a guess. As you said, Pandit Badan Mohan Malvi, so you didn't know. But still, you didn't, couldn't resist your temptation of yes, speaking. Yes, I was confused hard. between two so names. Keep when you are not, when you are confused, when you don't know what is the answer, keep quiet. Said I don't know. That, that doesn't cost you. But telling a wrong thing, it implies so many other connotations. Okay, sir. So be honest, be truthful. That is very important, and try to show your uh, other part of the personality. That is out of the box thinking, wherever possible, when, where you can impress upon the board of you having a qualities of a person who can think innovative, which is very important in today's bureaucracy. The board will like to give you good marks if you are able to display that quality. During your discussion, whatever you say, you should try to prove that you are a team player more than a team leader should be a team leader as well as team player also. Then when it comes to factual uh, questions, there you are going to be a civil servant, a government officer. A situational question was posed to you. Yes, sir. So, question was very clear that they have been arrested under some law. What will you do? You don't have unbridled powers to make free anybody you feel like. It's not wish, the law of the land. So you will act according to the law. Okay. So you look into the all aspects of the law. If there is any provision, you can word it in that way. If there is in any provision and any powers uh, available to me, then I might. But if there is no, then I am helpless. That kind of a situation. Then Swati is your name. Some questions may be asked on your name. 
to prepare that also last time what type of questions were asked so last last time basically uh, these opinion based question one to question and csr questions were there so i think i computer science no sir CSR, corporate, corporate social, social responsibility so why I, I why was did not it having the depth of knowledge why did it crop up csr suddenly out of the blue no sir i have mentioned that word in my statement and then the whole Obviously, inter- then you are the person responsible yes, for sir, that yes sir i was responsible so very that. very uh, you should uh, hear yes, also sir. hobbies you have written a lot of things because of paucity of time we didn't ask you questions dance you said prepare yourself thoroughly on dance okay sir. classical dances of the country where did they originate the folk dances western dances free free style and all that any th- questions uh, you may expect similarly so many other things are there advantages of walking can walking be a hobby that kind of a thing so what what, uh, what are the benefits of walking and all that Uh, so and so forth you know as a, you can think it over and prepare yourself okay sir then your indian foreign service is fifth reference why so that you should be mentally prepared okay because it's, it's a very pre- one of the very most prestigious services yes. and you have ranked it uh, at number 5 yes so look go through your uh, this thing options uh, order of preference okay sir and if any anomaly is there try to Make a mental note of it and prepare yourself. Okay, sir. Anything you want to ask, and the tribal communities and all, because you are a student uh, of uh, sociology, these questions are uh, there cannot be answers cannot be tentative. It has to be uh, as a student of uh, sociology, whatever you know about tribals and all that, just brush up your uh, knowledge. Okay, sir. Anything from your side? No, sir. And have confidence in yourself. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, with a smiling face. and a positive body language yes you can do wonders okay thank you sir all the best to you all the best thank you thank you ma'am